Affinity Designer version 2 has got a load of new features and they can all work well together. Not 100%, there is there's some odd quirks I've found. Symbols seem to have problems with warps. However, let's just create a copy of this. So I'm just going to create a circle. Create a circle and when you're dragging and creating, what you can do now is you can press the right arrow. Press the right arrow on the keyboard and as soon as you do that, it will create copies of that design. It's a nice feature, it's a recent addition. I think it's great. And also you can hold down the right arrow key and it will space it for you. So you've got that design there. Of course, you could do as before, hold down the alter option key and just duplicate or just use layer duplication. There is also now a great feature, shape builder tool. So select that, there's the shape builder tool. And you can go along here, the control bar, and you've got plus. You've got also got other ones. Please check out other videos on Infinity Designer and the Shape Builder. And now freehand, I can just simply just drag along there and they will all be combined. Again, you could do that, of course, in the layer menu and geometry. But you've got this lovely curve now of all those. You can use it with the other previous tools, such as contour. So here's the contour tool. Select that and just drag. And as you drag out, you can see the design there. And of course, there's different settings depending on the various shapes. Maybe go with something like that. And you can still modify it if you want. Now, what you can also do, warps, as well as effects. You'll notice in the effects now, here in the layers panel, that's in the window menu. That's another great feature of Affinity Designer. All the panels are all here now, which is really useful. So, and it's under quick effects. So just click effects and you go here. So maybe outline, just click there and create an outline. And you can see, now you've got that. And you also, there's an option here for plus adding additional outlines. That's another feature of Affinity Designer version two. Also gradient overlay. So if you want to add a gradient overlay, click there and you can see you've got a gradient overlay. Click plus again, you've got another one. And you can change it. So let's just go and tweak it. So click there, maybe like that. So you've got then, you've got that one. You can change the angle and they're independent. So with that combined there, that one's on top, above that one. Go to blend modes and you can go through here with different say, or so you combine the gradients. So you can create a variety of different colorful gradients simply by using very basic gradients and just using multiple copies that you add by using the plus. And click close. So now you've got this. Well, you can also use the new powerful feature of warps. There are other warp, other features as well. Knife tool, really useful. A bit more about that later in another video. Here's the meshes. You can find them elsewhere, but here's the mesh tool here. You just click here with the shape selected Click and you've got mesh, quad, perspective. You've got some presets, really useful ones. And you can say mesh, let's just go for mesh. And, and you can then drag down and you can see what happens. As you drag down, it looks like a, you know, a melting shape that's created by just dragging down. And you can just select on the edge here, just drag down that way. And you can see as you do it. And the reason for this is because of the contour and the designs obviously changing and warping. You might achieve that, you might not. I don't know. Sometimes it's one of those things that, it's one of those effects that, so you can just simply just click there. And also you can click on there, you can drag things up and click on the actual warp and you can create all kinds of designs from that basic circle. But you'll notice over here in the layers panel, it says warp group. That's what it is, it's a warp group. It's created a warp group. And what you can do, you can expand that out and you can still see your curves. So you can always still go to the contour tool, let's go to contour and just change that. So as you change it, you can see what happens. That's changing the contour, not the warp, the warp's untouched. So as you do that, you can see it will create different designs again. So you can create something like that. But also what you can do is you can go here and you can still, can, let's just go to the move tool next. I was just using the contour. Let's go to the move tool. You can just resize it so as you resize it it will change again you can see as you move it around reposition it 
You can also rotate it. So rotate it, and again, the design will change that way as well. And you can see you've got this gradient. You can still at any point just go here, click on the effects, and you can think, oh, you know what? I don't want an outline now. I can remove it. So it's still live. And also you can always say, grain overlay, I don't want that, or this one, or just change it. Just go select it, needs to be highlighted. Just click on here or change the scale. So you can see as you change the scale, or change the angle, and it will result in a different design. Or maybe go for 3D, and you can see you've got a 3D effect there, the radius. Just increase it to create. Now, it does create a bit of odd effects there. Click close. You've got that warp group. Well, you can actually use that with something else, a warp again. So you've got that warp group there. So with that selected, go here. Click down there and maybe this time go for bend. You could go for any of the others, of course. I'm just going for bend. And you can see the result of that. So you've got the warp group within the warp group. And that will distort it again. And again, you've got the opportunity to modify it. So as you modify it, Move that around, move that, tweak it, just stretch it that direction, that direction. So literally you can create millions of unusual warps by combining two or three warps together. So you do get this odd effect here. And again, you can select this one, that's the lower one, and modify that. And select the curves, and you can modify that. Again, move tool, resize, reposition it, and the warps untouched. But as you move it around, resize it, reposition it, you will see it just distorts in very unusual ways. So you can create literally thousands of different designs. Now you could use this with type, other shapes, images. Doesn't have to be just the very basic shape that I just created, which was a curve. Now also what you can do, of course, you can see another thing you can do. You've got this warp group. Curves are inside these warp groups. Well, you can hold down the alter option key and just duplicate it, that design with that curve selected. So that design there is again inside there. You've got this curve here and that one's warping away. This one as well warps as well. Though weirdly when it's like there, it doesn't seem to warp. Very strange, maybe it's slightly out of the influence of it. But you can see you can warp that. Now it's separate from the other one. It doesn't have, so you can still, you can go like that and move it around. So it will change and modify independent of the other one. I say resize it. And also, of course, you can go for the effects and change maybe 3D. You don't have one 3D. And you can tweak that, the outline, just maybe modify that, make it smaller. Or go to the, over here, the contour. As long as it's selected, select that, contour, and then you can tweak that and just move that around. And you can see you can create a variety of different designs. But of course, what you can also do is you of course can select and modify, and also you can blend them. So you've got here layers panel, you've got this curve above this curve. You can always go here and you can say darken or overlay. Now the result might not be particularly startling. Let's have a look, difference. Ah, oh, maybe because of the various blend modes and the effects are probably covering that up, so you can't modify. Now it's possible when you've got other shapes without effects, you might find that that doesn't happen. But you certainly can change blend modes. It doesn't seem to have an effect. I just tried it, I hadn't thought, I just suddenly thought, oh, let's just try it. And of course you can go here, you've got pass through. Now, again, I always love to try these doing things and sometimes it's a bad mistake because it suddenly doesn't do anything. No, got difference there, I thought maybe, Let's see if that makes any difference. No, it doesn't. And you've got pass through there. That's the default up there, pass through. What you can also do, and again, this is what an area that seems to also have a bit of an odd quirk, and that's why I wanted to point it out more than time. Sometimes you think, oh, it's gonna work. What you can do, you've got this warp group, you can create a symbol. Simply go here and create. So you can click create, and you can see you can create another warp group. And of course, with that other warp group, what you can do, you can just drag that on here. You can drag that on there. You can create multiple copies of it. And you would think, if it worked well, that it should all warp together. So you've got this curve and go to one of these curves. And I don't know which, oh, that one. 
and you can see as you move that, you'd think it would change all the others. And if you tweak various things, it doesn't seem to work very well. Likewise, if you select the warp groups and tweak the warp groups, it does seem to have a mind of its own whether it's going to work or not. So I'm not going to promise anything about that, but it's certainly a thing to, certainly you could try out. It does seem to work, and sometimes it doesn't seem to work in a way that I think it should work. But again, that might be just me expecting too much from the way it's set up with these warp groups and symbols. But that's a run through of the fact that you can combine lots of these great features to create all kinds of weird and wonderful designs. And you can still go back to this curve at any point and use maybe one of the other tools because there's some great tools here, the knife tool. Now I'm not gonna do that, but let's just go and do it because I can. Here, yeah, you can see you can cut through that. And of course then when you've cut through it, you can select the different parts of it and move it around. And let's just see, does it break those apart? Yes, it breaks it apart in the, all the other groups as well. There's another feature. You can use the knife tool combined with symbols with warp groups, as well as the shape builder and much, much more. I will be doing videos on all these features independently, but I just wanted to go through and show that a lot of these features can be combined in all kinds of great ways. And not only that, filter, sorry, file, Edit in photo, edit in publisher. So if you've gone for the universal, you can go to photo. Just go and edit this all in photo. Obviously this is, but you could then combine it with filters, other effects. And as I say, it could be images. It could be other designs like stars or other shapes you've created, not just very basic circles, contours, etc. Hope you found this tutorial of interest. Any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you much.